there, everyone. Welcome to episode number 545 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. In honor of my birthday, yes, I do celebrate for an extended amount of time, we're talking about one of my all-time favorite topics this week, VTOLs. My guest is Vance Hilderman, who is an expert in this field, an author, and the CEO of AFusion. Vance and I are talking all about AFusion's role in the aviation industry. ATIA's plans to launch an eVTOL aircraft in 2026, the impact that different requirements and regulations will have on this ATIA eVTOL, and where Vance thinks the eVTOL industry is headed in the future. So without further ado, please welcome Vance to Fish Fry. Hi, Vance. Thank you so much for joining me. Amelia, it's really my pleasure here for your morning, my evening. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm excited to talk about ATIA and the launch of a new line of eVTOL aircraft today. But first, let's talk about your history in the aviation industry. You're an expert in this field, an author and CEO of AFusion, which provides safety certification consultancy for the aviation industry. So first, Vance, tell me about your background and how you got interested in aviation. Well, Amelia, or shall I call you Miss Earhart? That's a wonderful <laughs> name. Everyone knows Amelia Earhart. Oh, my goodness. If she could have flown eVTOL or electric, there's no doubt she'd have been the first person to do it, not just the first lady. But my background in aviation is probably not different from many of our listeners today. I wanted to be Tom Cruise, Top Gun, except I'm older than Tom Cruise and not as good looking. But I wanted to be a naval aviator. And I failed the vision test. I passed the physical, the brains, all that stuff. But for some reason, they want you to have good depth perception, Amelia, to land on an aircraft carrier. What's with that? <laughs> well, it's kind of important, but I lack that particular attribute. So I became an aviation dude, if you will. And my whole career, many decades now, is focused solely on aviation and I've had four or five companies, all of them pretty prominent. I don't believe any one of our listeners can fly in a commercial aircraft, helicopter, or probable Western military jet without my company's software or systems or hardware involved in some way. But people don't realize maybe that of our 50 states in America, the largest export in 14 of them is aerospace products. It's a huge business, and a fusion is a probably the largest company that does what's called aviation design certification and development. And so we have 50 engineers, which is not a large company. It's just that we're larger than our next two or three competitors combined. We help big companies certify their aircraft. And aircraft are much more complex than buildings. So the building that you're listening in or the car that you're using has some certification involved inspection, plans, et cetera. Aviation has a hundred times more. So there's four books on the topic. None of them are any good, but I'm the author of two of them, maybe the worst two or, or the best two, who knows, but you don't learn from reading a book. But this aviation certification is why the aircraft we fly in and our military people fly in and weather balloons for that matter, why they're safe. And so it's a lot of work that goes into it and I think all my engineers are smarter than me, but it's a real fun business. And we want to talk about eVTOL, this latest rage that's going to take us by storm. Yes, let's talk about ATIA and eVTOL aircraft that you're looking to launch in 2026. So, Vance, what's the status of this eVTOL now? And what are the next steps to get this new aircraft into the next stages of a development? Oh, it's a great question. And it has got a super design. I'm not personally involved with that one firsthand. I'm working with other companies that are doing eVTOLs, but we keep abreast of each other. It's kind of like a winemaker in Napa Valley. 
They have their own vineyard, and they know what everyone else is doing. And to some degree, they share. This is aviation, but it's competitive as well. Atia has evolved their design from three fans, uh, one on each wing, one in the front, and a propeller to eight fans. And think of a fan as like a room fan tilted on its side so it can provide vertical thrust. But a TIA aircraft also has two regular fueled propellers, front and back, and canard wings. So it's pretty cool. Of these 200 different companies, an EVTOLs, electric vertical takeoff of landing aircraft, think of a quadcopter that you might buy at Walmart or online at Amazon. And think of it as being much larger that can carry people or cargo, perform rescue missions. It can do so quietly. It'll do so quite greenly, okay? And they're electric power. Now, we could talk about green. Where are we going to get the power? Is it nuclear? Is it coal? But in general, this is a trend that we need to really adopt to make aviation more sustainable because it's really growing. And so ATIA's got a very aggressive schedule. They want to have a demonstration flight next year at the Paris Air Show 2024, uh, just 12 months away. And then a year later, have their first production aircraft. Now, I think that's probably a little optimistic, okay? But we need a lot of optimism. We can think back to Elon Musk. You all know that. The Roadster wasn't that a cute car, the initial Roadster or the little Leaf, you know, the Volt, the different cars that came before that. And now electric cars are mainstream. What would we do without them, right? Who doesn't want a new cool electric car from one of the dozens of producers? Well, electric VTOL is really going to do the same thing. And we will have, I promise you, tens of thousands of eVTOL flying in our skies, our city over farms, over rivers, lakes, small oceans or seas, if you will. They don't have a long range yet. And we'll look at this as we did 30 years ago with the personal computer. You know, they didn't really exist 35 years ago. And 20 years ago, everyone has one, right? So they are coming, they are here, and please look up. You'll start seeing them flying, certainly test flying, and the sky's above you real soon. I love it. Okay, so Vance, regulations and other various requirements play a critical role in the development of V VTOL aircraft. So tell me about that and the impact that different requirements and regulations play in this space. Amelia, that's the $200 million question. We love to build these prototypes. Aviation is full of prototypes that really flew. But they did not maintain a profitable existence or even enter the real civil airspace of usability. Well, that's because there's $200 million of additional work associated just with certifying an aircraft. And that $200 million is not building the aircraft. The aircraft is already built, but it's the extra engineering, auditing, detailed review work and documentation proving that the aircraft is, now listen carefully, is at least 10 times safer than a car, okay? And truly, aircraft are because there's written equations, laws, rules that describe how that has to be attained. Now, since aircraft can't simply pull over if something happens, we need some extra reliability. And Atia's design is really interesting. Since they have a hybrid approach, hybrid, you know, folks, means a combination of something, right? It's a hybrid. So Atia uses these eight electric powered fans, two under each of the wings, it's canard, so four wings, right? And two propellers conventionally powered, that provides some extra safety. So hybrid has a lot of advantages for certification, but there's still that $200 million question. And so the question everyone should ask is, are all of these 200 plus eVTOL companies able to raise at least half a billion dollars? Okay, 500 million, half a billion. Well, 200 million of that is for the certification, the safety assessments, the architectural analysis, the review of each line of software code where there's hundreds of thousands of lines of code for these unique flight control computers. It's many millions of dollars. Folks, when you get in, 
a new Airbus A350 or a Boeing 787, you're getting in an aircraft that has over $5 billion of software in it for just the certification design of that first aircraft. Now, if you tall or smaller, when we helped Pipistrel in Slovenia, where I'll be on Monday, in fact, three days from now, when we helped them achieve the world's first all-electric aircraft certification four years ago, that was considered unprecedented. Fortunately, the TIA folks have come from Airbus, and they were the key folks who showed that you could fly all electric across the English Channel with that Airbus aircraft. So I was not involved with that either, but what a wonderful feat. So these rules, now that one did not have to be certified. Pipistrels did. Atia's will, everybody else will as well. So they've got to come up with that $200 million and an extra two to four years. That's calendar years, hundreds of person years of certification work to prove that they can really do it. So it's a challenge. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the future of e-tolls as a whole. Where do you see this industry heading? And what do you think it's going to take to get a widespread adoption of these kind of aircraft? Oh, great question. I think that there's several key areas where looking at some real accelerated adoption. Think of Uber, Lyft, okay, ride sharing. It did not exist 15 years ago. And now we have Turo where you can rent someone else's car. Okay, please rent me your Ferrari. I'll give it a good ride. Well, with this Uber-like, Lyft-like service, would you pay an extra three times to fly over the traffic? Now, I'm based in downtown Los Angeles. For me to get to the airport, it's about $35 to $40 in Uber or Lyft. Would I pay 100 to $150 to get to Los Angeles International Airport in eight minutes? Absolutely, many times. Sometimes I have extra time. I'm traveling with my wife, one of my kids. We don't care about the time, but that's not the real world. Is your life becoming easier or are you getting busier? How about the traffic since COVID? Is your traffic getting easier or heavier? Well, you know the answer. We're having more cars than we are, that's right, including electric, than we are roads being built. So the urban area is huge. But then you have search and rescue. You have less populated areas that don't have runways, okay? And they don't have a half a million to several million dollars for a helicopter. Well, that's where EV tolls can really come in. And we'll also see it in cargo carrying. You all know what Amazon is. 30 years ago, we didn't have Amazon home delivery. Today, you can order a lawnmower and have it on your doorstep the next day. Well, in India, you can buy a bar of soap, a can of beans, rice, noodles, and have it delivered to your house in 15 minutes. Well, Amazon of the skies, eVTOL, another great cargo drone capability. The military wants these. Everybody wants these. 35 years ago personal computers, my mother asked, that's cool, but what can you do with it? And I said, mom, nothing. But in a few years, we can program these computers. And then a guy named Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, you probably kind of know those names, made computers mainstream. Several companies are doing that right now for these eVTOL aircraft. So it's an exciting time to be around, Amelia. Absolutely, it is. All right. Well, Vance, it's time for your off the cuff question. So, (laughs) if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, it's on your same block, or the restaurant is closed, what would you have? You know, that's a great one because everybody has a memory of maybe a childhood food. And for me, It was my mother's ginger cookies. Now, mom and dad aren't with us anymore, but I still have the recipe. I just don't have that magic touch. So if we could channel my mom and get me one of her ginger cookies right now, I am over in Montenegro, other side of the world from you, Amelia, send me one over. But please send it in an eVTOL. It'll make me extra happy. I love it. That sounds wonderful and quite tasty. Well, Vance, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. 
Fantastic. Amelia, thanks so much. Really a pleasure. And you know what? This interview was one of my favorite interviews of all time. And if you're curious, I have a whole playlist of my very favorite episodes. This collection covers a variety of intriguing topics, including organic printed electronics, advancements in brain hand communication, autonomous indie cars, the world's most advanced elephant tracking collar, and more. And you can binge all of the episodes of this series by clicking the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com or by heading on over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash eejournal. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or hack you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of August 18th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>